Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to look at one verse. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. The title of the message is Light Rejected Becomes Lightning. Light Rejected Becomes Lightning. Light Rejected Becomes Lightning. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. The Bible says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Brother Bogey, can you please pray for the message? Mighty God, I come before you in Jesus Christ's name, Lord. Just thank you for your goodness and mercy, Lord. For the invisible things that you provide, wisdom and understanding, uh, discretion. Uh, Lord, I pray and thank you for salvation, full and free. I just want to pray and ask the Lord to fall on this congregation, fall yes, on the preacher yes, and pastor, and uh, bring this uh, message home to our hearts, Lord. Um, I pray, Lord, that we be pleasing in your sight and you help us to abide in your word yes. and be pleased in your sight. In Jesus Christ's name, I thank you. Amen. 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 So you're wondering, light rejected becomes lightning. And as we look at the verse, finding the will of God is the purpose and the main problem that faces every Christian on earth. You and I are here, and after you get saved, what is the most important thing for you to know? You want to know the will of God in your life. Then how can you know that will of God? When it comes to a light, you only need light for one step at a time. It's true. You don't need the whole light to go forward. If this room is in total darkness, in order to take one step forward, you just need that light, one light. God gives you one light at a time. That's what he does. He's not going to go, okay, from today and three years from now, you know, you're going to be a missionary somewhere, right? And everybody wants to know that. Or you're going to be a pastor, pastor's wife, missionary's wife, or whatever you want to do. However, God gives you one light at a time. And if God has given you that light for your step, then you must obey that light. Many times Christians don't obey that light. That's why that light becomes lightning in your life. Because if you were to obey the light that God has given you at each step at a time, then he'll give you further light. If you want to get to a destination, you need that light at that destination. But the, the way God works is that he shows you one step at a time. That's why you must obey whatever God has given you in your life. Because a lot of times, your prejudice and your own thinking and other people's thinking, because many Christians have to be careful. Many Christians have liberal ideas. Many Christians have humanistic ideas because you're instilled in those ideas as a human being. You have to always differentiate between your own thoughts and the Word of God. If Word of God overrules your prejudice and how you feel, then you go with the Word of God. Many times you reject the will of God because of your own will, because of your own understanding, because of your own desire to think about others. And what concept is that? comes down to socialism and communism. They all, they all sound great. Karl Marx, right? Stalin, you know, they're like, okay, it's for the people. And we want everyone to have an equal opportunity, equal distribution. But that's not how it works. That's why when your way of thinking contradicts with the Word of God, then just overrule it. Yeah. You yeah. just tell yourself, you know what? I'm going to be overruled because Amen. it's contrary to what the Word of God says. God wants to give you that plan, and God wants you to know that plan in your life. That's why the Bible has so many verses where it says, you know, wait patiently on the Lord. Just wait patiently on the Lord. If you don't wait patiently on the Lord, then what's going to happen? 
you're gonna go out of bounds. Yes, that's true. Can you imagine? You're, you saw the, you see this light, so you, took the, you take this step here, and you don't know anything in front. And then you're like, okay. From my way of thinking and all the lives that I've lived, it should be forward. You're not listening to God at all. You're not listening to the word of God. And before you know it, right in front of you is a cliff. And then there's no light there. God hasn't given you the light. But because of your own selfish desires and your will, you're like, okay, I'm going to take that step. And then many fall. Many Christians fall. Instead, if you waited, maybe God would have given your light another direction. So when it comes to your Christian walk and your Christian life, think about it. Am I following God's will? Do I even seek God's will? Because many Christians don't even care about God's will. All you care about is your own will. All you care about is, you know, your own desires and selfish reasons. And it, Oh, yeah, God's will is important, but my mom's will is more important. God's will is important, but my family's will is more important. A lot of times, that's where people stop growing as a Christian. Young people, they grow in the church. And you better be thankful that you grew up in the church. And, uh, don't be like, oh, yeah, you know, I wish I experienced the world and came back. Yeah, no, I mean, you don't want the worldly pleasures because you reap what you sow. And certain folks are still reaping, even though they got saved, for all the sins that they've committed in the past. Yes. Because God is fair God. You know, if you truly repented and confessed your sins, he doesn't remember. But you still have to pay for that sin. Then, if you grew up in the church, funny thing is that you hear about the will of God, following the will of God many, many times. And you should know better than anybody else. But once your mom and your daddy tells you, okay, my will for you is to go to this college. My will for you, too, is get this job. My will for you to do this and to do that. And it's contrary to the word of God because people have their selfish reasons. They want to show off to other people. True. Is that the will of God? No. It's never. Then you yourself as a Christian, as you grew up in the church, think about it. How's my thinking? What kind of, you know, ideas that I follow? Is everything a competition in your life? Because that's not the will of God. I need to be better than my sister in front of me. I need to be better than my brother next to me. I need to be better than, you know, that family, other family. You know, from experience, it's not as rampant in American culture, but it's very rampant in Asian culture. Hypocrites everywhere. I love you, brother. I love you, sister. But behind, okay, I hate you. You're my brother and sister in Christ, but I hate you. Wow. Why did you get into that college? It gives me so much pressure that I have to get into that college. Why did you get that job? Now my mom and dad is going to pressure me to get the same job or better. <laughs> you know, there's difference in culture where you know, American culture will be like, hey, I'm so happy for you, genuinely. Amen. Because they're, they're, they're fine where they are, right? I mean, if I'm a maintenance person, and that's the best that I could do, I'm fine. Amen. And if you have the ability to become a CEO somewhere, good for you. That's fine. Truly happy for you. But many of the mindset inside the church, because you don't know the will of God, because all you seek after is your will, man, everything's competition. Rivalry after rivalry after rivalry. Why is it that you grew up together inside the church instead of you loving each other, but all you see each other as is competition. Man, oh, I go to this college, and you don't really say it too much, but your parents will say it all the time. My child goes to this college, you know. I'm so proud of him. Are you really? Why, why do you have to, like, say it to the whole world? I don't need to hear you going to this college, that college. All I want to know is that if he's faithful and doing the will of God, I mean, if it's a good college they're going, fine. If they're going to not as well-known college, that's fine too. Amen. Because at the end of the day, 
God's going to be the one who opens the door. Yes. Man, I could have a college degree from Harvard, Princeton, PhD from any other places. But if God calls, you know what? I'm not going to open the door for you. Right. I'm not going to get it. Come on. Okay. I've gotten positions where I thought I had no chance. I didn't get the positions. I thought I had the best chance. It's all up to God. Yes. That's why you as Christians have to understand. Point number one, God has a plan for every Christian. Every Christian. So you only look at your own self. Stop looking at other people. I mean, say our brother over there, prosecutor, becomes like attorney general. And then you want to be a lawyer too. Like, okay, my goal in life is to beat him. You know? God, give me all the resources to beat that brother because I want my mom to tell his mom that, you know, my son's better than him because his mom's always saying that his son's better than everybody else. Wow. And you laugh because it's happening. I mean, if you're not laughing, I guarantee you, you're like, oh, yeah, oh, what is he talking about, you know? Well, you laugh because you know it's happening in your life. It's happening everywhere. God has planned for every Christian. Amen. God has planned for you. God has planned for me. Yes. And it's different for each person. So stop looking at anybody else. Amen. Okay, he married that girl. And I need to marry someone who's prettier than the girl to show people. Man, she married that guy. You know, he's got a lot of money, so I have to marry someone who has more money, you know? Like, Christians become so inundated and so full of their selfish desires and trying to show off to people that they forget that God has a will for each Christian, and you must accept it. And you must know that it's just for me and it's just for him, just for her. And that's it. Leave it at that. And if it doesn't happen to you what's happening for them, it doesn't matter. All good. It doesn't matter. Yes. If God wants that person to have a million bucks, that's it. Yes. And you have zero dollars. Amen. And if that's his will, then that's it. Oh, if that's God's plan for you, then you accept it. Amen. Because once you accept that part, that God has a very personal plan for me, and I don't have to worry about other people, then you get to know his specific will. When you're always worrying about other people's competition and rivalry, you'll never know your own personal will and God's specific will for you because there's no time and there's no space for you to know God's will in your life. You know, Acts 22, 14 says, you know, God wanted Paul to know his specific will. And he said, the God of our Father hath chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that just one, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine own eyes. Psalms 32, 8. God has ordained certain specific work for every Christian. And you must accept it. And you must know it. If you live your each day as if just like robotic, you know, I go to work, eat, wash up, go to sleep. Then what's the purpose in your life? I mean, is that all you do in your life? But people who seek God's will and people who understand that God has specific will for each person, they strive to meet that will every single day. It's almost like a thermometer gauge. I don't know if you guys have seen any of those thermometer charts. If God's will is here, and God wants you to get there by taking each step. So Monday, you know, I did this and that, going towards God's will. Tuesday, going towards that. And it all comes to obe obeying God's you know, will, God's word. And then each light gets you closer and closer and closer. And when that, di when that final day comes, you know, how they make the like, ring, ring, ring sound, right? If it hits the goal. And then that goal should be hitting in your life for each specific will that God has for you. But how many of you guys have actually heard that bell, heard that ring in your life? Because you don't even seek after God's will. That's why you don't even know where you are at. You have to understand that 
If God has a specific will for you, and many times it's not talking about distant future, then it is current moment where God wants you to be, where he wants you to be, and doing what he wants you to do. Do you know what God wants you to do right now? Are you at a place where God wants you to be? How many of you guys can confidently say it? For kids, it's probably easy. School, right? I mean, if you're, if you're whether it's homeschool or public school, you know, if you're a school-aged kid, if you're a third grader, you should be doing schoolwork. You, know, you shouldn't be not, work, not going to school and going somewhere else and trying to make money as a nine-year-old or 10-year-old, right? Especially here in America, right. right? And if you're a man, you know, you should be working. Amen. Man. I mean, that's the will of God. Yes. As a head of the household, you, you got to be working. And if you're not working, then you're not in the will of God. Simple. Yes. Uh, then don't expect God to suddenly call you, hey, be a missionary to jungles in Amazon. God never works like that. But other churches will deceive you. They'll be like, okay. It's okay. It's okay. You're not doing your best in your worldly occupation work. But hey, just come to church. And then you just become a pastor or missionary somewhere else. God does not bless that. Devil will. Right? Right. If you are not faithful in the little things that God has given you, then you'll never find the true will of God. And all you're going to be saying is, hey, you know, what is the will of God for me? What is the will of God for me? Because God's plan is definite and specific. Did you hear? God's will is always definite and specific. Isaiah 30, 21 says, And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. The Lord guides by his Spirit through the word. God directs you in a definite and specific ways. Do you know those ways in your life? If you don't, that just tells you you're not living in the will of God. And obviously, if you're not living in the will of God, sin has control over you in your life. Right. Simple as that. Yes. People say, oh, man, why is my life just boring? Nothing's happening, and I don't even know what God wants me to do. Why? Because you're living in sin. That's right. Simple as that. You know, God does not making, make things complicated. When you live in sin, do you think you seek after God's will? No way. That's the furthest thing that you want to know. When you live in sin, what does that tell God? That you don't fear him. I'm not scared of you, God. I'm going to do whatever I want to do in my life. Then what happens? You will never find God's will. And you will just trust your own heart when the Bible says trust in the Lord with all thine heart. But you are trust in you with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. That's what the Bible says. Lean not unto God's understanding. So everything's backward. Everything's backwards. Bible says in all thy ways acknowledge him. You don't acknowledge him. In all thy ways acknowledge me. Simple as that. Isn't that true? Doesn't that ring a bell? Yes. In all thy ways, like you're telling everybody, in all thy ways, acknowledge me, and I shall direct my path. It's true for many, many Christians. Yes. Okay. And again, I'm going back to worldly ways of how Christians behave. Worldly Christians. I got a great job. I need people to know. You know. I need my mom to tell everybody. I need my dad to tell everybody. You're like, suddenly you start a conversation or you find a conversation. Hey, what do you do? 
What do you do? Right? And it's not to really genuinely understand others. You just want to start so that you have opportunity to tell about yourself. You hear them talk for five, 10 minutes. You know, they go to this company, they do this and that. And then you have, you're with a group of people and you're like, someone asks you, finally, you waited five long minutes for someone to ask. So what do you do? Man, do you know people who waited certain yeah. time to give their own opinion? Let me tell you. Yeah. I mean, you, you're the most excited person amongst all the people talking for no, no reason. I mean, they're just talking, but you're so excited. Hey, you know, I just got this promotion, and I'm going to make this much money. You know, I'm going to do this and that and that and that. <laughs> What's the purpose? Your purpose is to show off to people. And you want people to acknowledge you. As Christians, you better get rid of that. You better get that out of your head. Amen. Don't expect people to acknowledge you. Let God acknowledge you. That's it. Yeah. Don't be like, hey, I could play impromptu, Chopin, all that piece. I could play all of hymns with my, my own memory, you know. Acknowledge me. And if, like, pastor doesn't acknowledge you, you become sad. How dare he? And I just played that thing for 30 minutes without looking at any note. And people are clapping and stuff. And he did not acknowledge me. I don't like this church. I'm going to somewhere else. Who's going to acknowledge me? It happens all the time. And then some people... I have this great knowledge in the Word of God. Acknowledge me. I, am I supposed to say, hey, brother, you know, you told me something that Dr. Ruckman told me already, and I'm, I'm so happy, you know? <laughs> There's nothing new under the sun, and all the revelation, new revelation, God used Dr. Ruckman, and everything else comes after. It's just on you. A lot of times it's theory and stuff, so it's not going to be my final authority. I'm sorry. Because to me, you're not better than Dr. Ruckman. Right. You yourself should know that you're not better than Dr. Ruckman, right? right? Then, I surely hope that even myself, I have to check. Am I in the business of serving the Lord to show off to other people? Or do I really want God to direct my path, every path? If you do, then... You understand that God's the only one who knows the future, and He is the only one capable of choosing your path. What does that mean? You don't choose your path. Amen. You shouldn't. You're bought with a price. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You're God's. Amen. I'm pretty sure it's tough for our adults who come here having you know, already a job or business in place. But I tell you what. We had, you know, example after example where people who got saved became a Bible believer and wanted to do God's will. And they realized what they were doing wasn't in God's will. Someone, you know, they had liquor store. You know, I'm selling liquor. What does that do? Nothing good. Amen. They sold the business. Praise the Lord. Can you imagine? You make certain, you know, given income every month, and it's good money, and it gives stability to your home. Mind you, money, love of money is root of all evil, right. yeah. and money will destroy many Christian families and have destroyed many Christian families. With that in your mind, and you've seen it happen, and you're going to tell that to your family, your wife, and your children. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I know what I'm doing right now is not in the will of God. So I'm going to sell the business. And I'm going to trust the Lord that he'll provide our needs Amen. as he promised in the word of God. Yes. We have great testimonies of people who've done that in our church. But we also have great or bad testimony of people who hasn't done that. Right. And never finds the true will of God in their life and some of them aren't here anymore, or many of them. 
if God has a specific will in your life, then he's going to let you know about it to make that decision. And it's up to you to make that decision. If you choose and obey God's light, then you're going to do things for God. You're going to live a joyful Christian life. Yes. You're going to have peace in your heart. Yes. If you don't, you'll never have peace in your heart. You won't be joyful. You'll be, how should I say, someone who knows what's right, but who doesn't follow it. Yeah. It's like a little kid. You know, a lot of times you and I are like little kids and animals. You know, our pet. If you know that you have to go that way, and that's going to make your master happy, but you go the other way, what's going to be in your heart? Always nervousness. Yeah. Always worry. Always waiting for that punishment. Waiting for that lecture. Waiting for that chastisement. That's not a way to live as a Christian, brethren. No. I mean, if you're not living in the will of God, and if you don't have desire to live in the will of God, then you're going to live that way until the Lord comes back. Or you die. What a pathetic way to end your Christian life. Well, what does your tombstones going to say? Never follow the will of God. Lived as an unhappy Christian, nervous all the time. As Christians, you shouldn't be nervous. Amen. Only, way, only reason you're nervous, only reason you have a lot of stress many times for the wrong reasons is because you're not in the will of God. Yes. Have you seen the faces? Have you seen yourself in the past when you truly knew that you're in the will of God, as in you obey the word of God, you have right relationship with God, you actually have peace. You weren't nervous. Right. You weren't. You didn't have much stress because you knew God was going to take care of everything. Don't get me wrong. In this day and age, you're going to have stress, but is that the right stress? Man, if my stress is that, man, I really want that soul to get saved. I'm stressed out because that soul's not getting saved, you know? I mean, do, do you have that kind of stress or do you have stress like, man, I, I need more pleasure in my life, but it's not happening. Or I cause all this trouble in my life. How am I going to rectify it, you know? How am I going to resolve it because of my sin? All this came in my life. I mean, that's on you then as you know, if you are not going to change, then you're going to be where you are. And you're only going to get worse. Simple as that. As Christians, if you just deny that God has specific will in your life and plan in your life, and you just want to fulfill the lust of your flesh, then live that way. We'll see your destruction one way or the other. Simple as that. And people will receive it two ways. Seriously or don't care attitude. Yeah, you could tell me all you want, you know. But it's not going to affect me. I have my own life. I have my own ways. Keep it like that then. Just go to your own destruction. Now, I'm not going to hold your hand. Nobody should be holding your hand. Right. You have your own free will. Come on. You're not a little baby. For many of you, we do have some real babies here, but majority of you guys aren't baby. You, you can make your own decision. Amen. And if you do what your parents tell you to do, and then you fall into you know, destruction because those weren't in God's will, it's on you. That's right. Don't blame your parents. Don't blame your situation. Don't blame anything else. Don't blame Biden. Don't blame you know, <laughs> Newsom. Don't blame all, those, all the politicians, right? right. And at the end of the day, it's your responsibility. Then, now, okay, you understand that, okay. God has a specific will for my life, and I know it now. Then what should I do? Second thing is the condition for Lord's guidance. If you want to know Lord's guidance, if you want to know the will of God, these are the specific things that you have to do. And, of course, you already know the answer for many of them. First thing is that you have to trust in the Lord, no matter what. 
You have to trust the Lord. If the word of God says so, trust it. Simple as that. Many times you get in trouble because you don't trust the Lord. I get in trouble because I don't trust the Lord. If the Lord says he's going to provide me, if, he, if I'm, in the, I'm in his will, he's going to take care of me. But your flesh goes, hey, 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 hey. you got to pay this rent tomorrow. Man, you have 24 hours. Man, if you trust the Lord like many of the missionaries in the past, they'll wait on the Lord. And what do you know? They have so many great testimonies that next day when you have to pay the rent, there's money in your bank account, right? Or job situation. Oh, man, Lord God, Lord God, you know. I trust you that you'll give me the right job for me to be in the right ministry. But no, 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 no. Lord, you know, this job, I have to take it. It's going to further my career. It's going to help me make more money. And it's going to help me become bigger for you. And you don't know it because you didn't trust the Lord and then you did not really, really think about what he wants in your life. You just want what you want in your life. And that job, you take it, and then you have no time for ministry. You don't do anything for God anymore. You have no time for the family. You know, literally, work and job consumes you. That is not trusting in the Lord. If you have trusted the Lord, you will wait until the Lord provides that perfect job for you. Simple as that. Many times you get into trouble because you're ahead of the Lord. You're always in front of the Lord. Like, Lord did not show you light, you know, in front of you, only just next to you. You're like, okay, Lord, I'm going to assume that that's your will. Can you believe it? We do that thing that we should never do. We start assuming things. We assume that, hey, eh, well, you have no conviction. You don't pray about it, and you don't even look at the Word of God. Just from your own pure carnal desire, I'm pretty sure that's what God wants me. <laughs> it's like saying, I'm pretty sure God wants me to, you know, we're pre street preaching on Friday night at L.A., and they have all those casino buses out there. Man, I'm pretty sure that's God's will me to get in the bus, <laughs> make some money, and come back Saturday night. Or Sunday morning and go straight to church. And you're like, why are you so tired, brother? I was working all night. <laughs> well, yeah, working with the slot machines and everything else. Right. That's not trusting in the Lord. Don't ever confuse you trusting in the Lord with you trusting anything else. And if you want the Lord's guidance, of course, you have to trust the Lord and you have to commit to the Lord. Psalms 37 5 says, Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. How committed are you to the Lord? Are you willing to give up everything you have for the Lord? If it's Lord or something else, are you going to commit to him? Choose him over anything else. Amen. Unless you have that heart where you are at a place where I'm going to choose the Lord over my financial, over my relationship, over my health, then you will never get Lord's guidance like you should. You think it's hard. Yeah, if you try and trust your flesh to do it, it's going to be hard. However, if you make your old nature die as is, you know, crucified on the cross, then you let your new nature and let the Holy Spirit start having majority, or if not all, of your life. We say, fill us with the Holy Ghost all the time. How, how filled are you with the Holy Ghost, by the way? Look at your life. You say, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. If you're not committing yourself to the Lord, you'll never be filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't just say it. 
I mean, as the ministry goes on and on and on, that's one thing I'm learning more and more and more. What I say, I'm responsible, no matter what happens. Whether I say it with a good intention, bad intention in between, it's my responsibility. Which means, whatever I commit to say, I'm responsible for it. Whatever you commit to say to the Lord, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, then you have to understand what comes with it. You want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Get rid of sins in your life. Amen. If you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, get rid of your own ways. Yes. If you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, you have to choose God no matter what. Yes. When you don't feel like it, you're not going to choose God. As in many verses in the Word of God, said, abstain from all appearance of evil. And someone says, hey, let's go, you know, let's go watch a movie. You know, let's go to a worldly concert. Let's go to CCM. You know, let's go to Harvest Crusade, you know, which is happening. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just to, let's hear some good music. And your good music is K-pop. Your good music is R&B. Your good music is like rock and roll and all those worldly stuff. CCM. Right. And then you expect to be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's a farce. That's like spitting at God's face. Yeah. Don't even say it. Come on. I'm scared to say it because if my life doesn't show it. I mean, words are cheap. How are you and I going to be in the will of God? If we just say it only, but we never show it in action. Man, be a man. You say stuff, do it. If you committed something to the Lord, do it. If you told God that, Lord, I'm going to spend time with you for at least 15 minutes every day. If you, your, your job finishes at 3 a.m., doesn't matter. You do it. I mean, we have a brother who works through those shifts. Yes. Doesn't matter. He chose, it's his choice that he got the job. So you have to do it. I mean, there's not going to be no excuse like, ah, oh, God, I'm working in graveyard now, so I can't spend time with you. No. You commit it to the Lord and you do it. Amen. If you don't do it, then what's going to happen? You're going you're gonna to lose out. Simple as that. You're going to lose out on Lord's blessing. You're going to lose out on all the spiritual joy, even physical joy that Lord gives us sometimes. And you're just going to live a horrible, very pathetic Christian life. Do you want that? Do you want to end up as a pathetic Christian who God gave all the chance in the world to get right, and then you just reject it? I mean, continuing, then, okay, I'm going to commit my ways to the Lord. And what naturally follows? Then you have to surrender to the will of God now. Okay, I'm committing to you, Lord. Then whatever Lord sends your way, you're going to surrender to the will of God. And sometimes surrendering is so hard. Husbands, sometimes you have to listen to your wife. And I learn it every day. They tell you the right things, but because... You know, because of your stubborn will, you're like, ah. <laughs> but you have to surrender to the will of God. And God's will is that you obey everything that he says in the word of God. You're like, how do I surrender to will of God? Obey what the Bible says. Amen. It's simple as that. Yes. It's not rocket science where you have to go to a mountain and spend 40 days and 40 nights. Yeah. No. You go to the Word of God. What does that tell you? You want to truly surrender to the will of God? You got to hit the book. Amen. You got to know what He wants you to do. Yes. Stop saying, Lord, I want to serve you. I will commit my life to you. I surrender to you. This is like a lot of charismatics and Pentecostals and a lot of religions out there. I want to serve you, Lord God. But they never, ever hit the book. Right. And then they just hear what someone tells them. And then they get angry. Like a lot of liberals out there, they get angry because they have no facts. They don't want a fact. I mean, they don't want facts. They don't want the truth. 
they just go with their carnal, carnal ways of saying, you know what? Speaking in tongues, it's okay. Let us know. Show us a proof. No. <laughs> it's been okay since 1900, you know, Topeka and everywhere, Azusa. So it's okay. Jesus Christ, I saw him. That's, he told me what to do. <laughs> the visions and if you, you know, Satan comes to you as an angel of light. That's right. No, 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 no. Even though the Bible said that, I'm not going to believe it. I'm going to believe what I saw in my dreams. Oh. You don't surrender to the will of God if you don't obey his word. Amen. And if you want guidance from God and if you want to know the will of God, you have to separate from the world. Amen. You have to separate from the world. Simple. I mean, there are no alternatives. Being in the world will never help you find the will of God. It's like water and oil. It's not going to mix. It's always going to be separated. Yes. If God's will is in the water, then you have to get rid of the oil. Right? right. Amen. If God's will is in oil, you have to get rid of all the water. You can't have both. You can't please the world and please God, and you can't please God and please the world. You have to surrender complete to the Lord and separate yourself from the world. And I don't have to tell you and list you, list things that's of the world. You know what they are, right? Yes. Separate from them. If you don't, then you will not find the will of God, and you're not going to be living in the will of God. Then, now you did all this. I committed myself to the Lord. I trust in the Lord. I surrender to the Lord then how is the Lord going to direct my path, right? He pri primarily, God, guides through his word. So you find through the word of God. The more you read the word of God, you'll see more guidance from God. Yes. The less you read from the word of God, the less you find. It's almost like that direction. And back in the day, we had to use Thomas Guy. Uh, to go to places. If I need to go to point A to point B, I open it, and then I follow each street and each direction. If I don't use it, I mean, what am I going to do? I'm just going to, do I expect to just drive and then find the destination? No, wow. you have to follow. Yeah. If you want God's will, you have to go through the word of God. You have to. And of course, through preachings, you'll find it as well. Amen. A lot of times, you'll, you'll be called during you know, a lot of preachings, through preachings. And you, you might have had burden for the lost souls out there. A lot of missionaries, you know, they get called to be missionaries through preachings, through the Word of God. Like pastors as well. I mean, even myself, you know, through preaching, right? It's not, it's not that you just, just do it for the heck of just doing it, you know? That's not going to last. If you're doing it out of your own will, it's not going to last. Right. But if God calls you to do it, and then you obey, it's going to go on as long as you're faithful. Because God's will is never contrary to the word of God. If word of God says one thing, God's not going to say another thing. That's why if you want to know more about God and his will and guidance, if you want that light not to become lightning in your life, then go to the book. And it's something that you and I need to be preached at on a daily basis. Go to the book more. Go to the book more. Any free time, any you know, available time, go to the book. Go to the book. You know? I'm not saying you have to be a hermit and do that. No. You live a balanced life. And God gives you opportunity. You go to the book and you go to the book. And then what happens? Your life is just 
dictated by word of God, his word, then you get that Holy Ghost conviction. That inner conviction the Holy, gives, Holy Ghost gives you. Like some, certain things are gray matters, but you get that conviction. Because Romans 8.16 says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. As they minister to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost has separated me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Holy Spirit has given purpose and guidance. Then in order to understand and get the guidance, you have to live your life according to the Word of God, full of Word, word of God, simple as that. Then when the circumstances come your way, you know God's using it to reveal more of His will in your life. Because sometimes things happen you don't understand. And you have nowhere to go. But you be patient, wait on the Lord, and the Lord's going to show you. Then God brings more people to you in your life. And you start getting counsel and advices from faithful men of God and women, right? Yeah. right? Who have gone through it before you. I mean, I think the best advice I could get is from someone who went through it before me, Amen. right? I mean, if I need, you know, advice and counsel, I'll just go to Pastor Kim because he went through the same thing. Simple as that. But you have to have that willing heart to follow. You have to have that heart. It's not there for you to, how should I say, be a better person than the other person, but, but to learn from it and heed those advices to your heart. Many people have been given a lot of good advices and counsel, but they ended up just rejecting it. They say, you know what? Sounds all good and stuff, but I'm not going to do it. And they know the reason why they don't want to do it, because they don't want to sacrifice anything in their life. They want to still keep the pleasure in your life. If you, as a Christian, are not willing to sacrifice anything, are willing to give up your pleasure of the world, the flesh, then forget it. Don't even seek the will of God. It's like you're telling God, God, I'm going to do all these bad things, but still bless me. Simple as that. That is not how God works. I'll end with this. F.B. Meyer said, When the word of God, the impulse of the Holy Spirit in my heart, and the outward circumstances are in harmony, Again, when the Word of God, the impulse of the Holy Spirit in my heart, and the outward circumstances are in harmony, then I am convinced that I am acting in accordance with the will of God. So think about it. Your life. Is your life dictated by Word of God? Ask that question. Do you follow the impulse of the Holy Spirit? Conviction. Is your circumstances in harmony with those? Like, I don't go to the bar. I abstain from all appearance of evil. I mean, you're in harmony then. You can't be like, oh yeah, I have the word of God in my heart. I have conviction in the Holy Ghost in my heart. But my circumstances, I go drink with the buddies you know, after work or do drugs, you know, wow. or something like that. Then you're not in harmony. So those three things, just like F.E. Meyer said, then I am convinced that I am acting in accordance with the Word of God. Amen. And that's, that sums it up, the whole thing. Yes. Right? If you don't want light rejected to become lightning, accept the light. Amen. Take it one step at a time. Yes. Never go back on God's guidance. If He says do it, just do it. Right? If the Word of God says do it, just do it. No if and buts. And then He will reveal His will for you day by day. The right road leads to the right place. So the best preparation for tomorrow is to do what you ought to do today. 
if God already told you and convicted you to do what you need to do today, then don't wait until tomorrow to read the Word of God. Don't wait until tomorrow to study the Word of God. Don't wait until tomorrow to spend time with God. You've got to start doing it today. Let's pray. Dear Father, it is life's biggest question after you get saved. What is the will of God in my life? You have a specific plan for each person. Help us not to be weary and just thinking about what others need to do and what others are doing, but just truly care about what each person has to do, what I have to do in you, Lord. Help me to commit. Help me to just surrender. And help me to be in accordance with you, Lord, with the Word of God and the Holy Spirit conviction and also the circumstances. We want to live in your will, Lord God. And you have provided us all the resources to do that, Lord. Help us to stay away from our selfish and fleshly desires, but to be in your will, Lord. And I pray that you bless the rest of the day and rest of the services and especially protect people's health, Lord. And number one prayer, Lord, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.